Did you know that? <sighs> no. Welcome back to Doki Doki Literature Club. Last time we had some even more intimate moments with Yuri. Um, pretty sure we upset Sayori. And now I have another poem to read. So we've been starting with the same order whenever we have a new poem. So why don't we start with Yuri? Seems the most appropriate. We just had an intimate moment that was interrupted. Doki Doki, your writing has only improved in these last few days. Yeah, because I've purposefully been trying to write to you. Every, pro every poem you've shown me has been nothing short of spectacular. I mean, I am trying to flatter you, so... I can really feel the emotions. I'm a little envious, even. I don't think it ever came to me this naturally. Yuri, that's the wrong way to put it. This never did come naturally to me. Yeah, I really had to sit there. Like, I misclicked some words that I thought were for you, but they weren't. But I've been able to improve so much thanks to you. You're really the example I was chasing after. Is is that so? Yuri gently smiles to herself. This feeling. I'm so glad I got the chance to share my writing. I've never thought it would feel like this. I remember you mentioning that yesterday. I can't believe that you're so good at something and you've never even shared it with anyone. It's kind of a shame. Maybe, but it's not like I really had a choice. What do you mean? Well... Yuri smiles sadly. Doki Doki, during lunchtime I eat by myself. Did you know that? It's a great time to find a quiet spot and do some reading. So wait, is that by choice or because like, you don't have many friends? In fact, I always have some books with me. You could say that I really enjoy reading. Well, that's one way to put it anyway, but books are so full of amazing and inspiring people. People you want to fall in love with or people you just want to make a really good friend, cheerful people who always put a smile on your face, or deep thinkers and problem solvers who discover the mysteries of life. So when you look at it that way, I'm surrounded by friends every day. You know? And those friends don't laugh at me. They don't tease me for spacing out all the time. They don't make fun of my body type. And they don't hate me for acting like a know-it-all. People say that about you? I'm not a know-it-all, Doki Doki. It's the opposite. I don't know anything. I don't know how to talk to people. I don't know how to make people see me as normal. I don't even know how to make myself happy. I have all these feelings, and all I can do with them is read and write. But it wasn't until now that I started sharing it with you. That I really understood what was missing all this time. But I haven't really done anything. No, that's wrong. Just being patient and respectful, that's really important to me. It's important to all of us. I know I'm a difficult person, Doki Doki. I speak too slowly. I second guess myself all the time. I read too deeply into things. But every time, you've always treated me like everyone else. It's so rare that I feel comfortable with myself when I talk to others. But that's why every time I talk to you, I just feel really happy. I see. Well, I treat you how, I de how you deserve to be treated, Yuri. And if other people don't see it that way, then screw them. I mean, I joined this club hoping I would make friends. I mean, you got cupcakes, but... And I would say I've had at least one success, wouldn't you? Um, if you put it that way, yeah. We really are friends now, aren't we? Yuri puts her head in her hands, but this time she isn't smiling as she does it. It's like she wants more than friends. Do you want to show me your poem? Yeah, I do. Let me get it for you. Beach. I marvel millions of years in the making where the womb of Earth chaotically meets the surface. Under a clear blue sky, an expanse of bliss, but beneath gray rolling clouds, an endless enigma, the easiest world to get lost in, is one where everything can be found. One can only build a sand castle where the sand is wet, where the sand is wet, the tide comes. Will it gently lick at your foundations until you give in? Or will a sudden wave send you crashing down the blink of an eye? Either way, the outcome is the same. Yet we still build sandcastles. I stand where the foam wraps around my ankles, where my toes squish in the sand. The salty air is therapeutic. The breeze is gentle yet powerful. I sink my toes into the ultimate boundary line, tempted by the foamy tendrils. Turn back and I abandon my peace 
to a road at the shore, drift forward, and I return to the to Earth forevermore. Um, I'm aware that the beach is kind of an inane thing to write about, but I did my best to take a metaphorical approach to it. You say that like you didn't even want to write about it. Oh, you haven't heard? After yesterday, Natsuki and I, well... It was amusing that we wrote about something similar in such different ways. So Natsuki wanted us to write about the same topic as each other again. Oh! I suppose to better compare the differences in our writing styles or thought processes. Anyways, it was her idea. Knowing her, it's no surprise that she'd want to do something like that. She probably just wants to show off. It's not like I have a particular interest in her writing style. I just went with her request, but, well, I suppose it's not so bad to write about something simple on occasion. It can be refreshing, you know? It's good for me to calm my thoughts once in a while. Yeah, I think I agree. Thanks for sharing. Wow, I think that's like the simplest conversation we've had with her about like the poetry. Um, what about Monica? Monica's had some interesting poems. Hi, Doki Doki. Have you thought about what you want to submit to perform at the festival? Well, being in this club is one thing, but performing in front of a bunch of people, I'll have to give it some more thought. Okay, no pressure. But whatever you do, I'm sure it'll turn out great. It would also make me happy to see. <laughs> anyway, let's take a look at today's poem. Sure. I let Monica take the poem I'm holding in my hands. This one's good. It feels like you're not only getting more comfortable with your style, but the imagery is better than the last one I read. Just wondering, but have you been finding inspiration in Yuri's writing style? Maybe. Hmm, I guess so. You can't deny that she's talented. Yeah, totally. I think her poems are the most romantic. Hmm. That's the best way to describe it. Like, she's a totally different person when she picks up a pen. Is it that she's totally different, or it's just, like, a different layer to her? I noticed that, too. Or when she's talking about literature, it's like a light turns on inside her. Like, right? Like, that's different than, like, a different person. Hmm. Sadly, it's hard to get much personal conversation out of her. Trust me, I've tried. But Yuri said that, like, it's easy to talk to us because we listen. So, but Monica's saying like, oh, I can't get that to happen. So is Monica not listening? Who knows what's going on in that head of hers? I hope you don't mean that in a bad way. No, of course not. I just meant that I wish she didn't keep so much to herself. But still, defending her like that, you must be pretty into her. Not everything has to be that way. Eh. You completely misunderstood. <laughs> Calm down, I'm kidding. Besides, I'm pretty sure she's already got a boyfriend. Wait, really? Yeah, a fictional one anyway. Monica kind of whispers that last part to me. Maybe this is why, like, Yuri doesn't open up to Monica, because, like, Monica says shit like that. It's just a hunch, but, well, there's not really anything wrong with that. Oh, well, I know. I was just saying. Anyway, so and then, then we brush it off like a joke. I'll share my poem with you now, all right? Uh, all right. The Lady Who Knows Everything. An old tale tells of a lady who wanders earth. The lady who knows everything. A beautiful lady who has found every answer, all meaning, all purpose, and all that was ever sought. And here I am, a feather, lost adrift the sky, victim of the currents of the wind. Day after day I search. I search with little hope, knowing legends don't exist, but when all else has failed me, when all others have turned away, the legend is all that remains, the last dim star, dim star glittering in the twilight sky. Until one day, the wind ceases to blow. I fall, and I fall, and fall, and fall even more. Gentle as a feather, a day quill expressionless, but a hand stretches between me, between the thumb and forefinger, the hand of a beautiful lady. I look at her eyes and find no one to her gaze. The lady who knows everything knows what I am thinking. Before I can ask, she responds, in a hollow voice. I have found every answer, all of which amount to nothing. There is no meaning, there is no purpose, and we seek only the impossible. I am not your legend, your legend does not exist. 
But with a breath, she, bro she blows me back afloat, and I pick up a gust of wind. You know, I feel like learning and looking for answers are the sort of things that give life meaning. Not to get too philosophical or anything, but it was kind of on my mind, so that's what I wrote about. I see. I never really put much thought into it. In a way, it's almost paradoxical. Because if we had all the answers, wouldn't the world start to lose its meaning? You know, there's one thing I noticed. It seems like everyone in the club prefers writing about things that are more sad than happy. Yeah? Uh, are you surprised? I mean, if everything was okay, we wouldn't really have anything to write about, would we? Humans aren't two-dimensional creatures. I think you know that better than anyone. You mean one-dimensional. Oh, yeah, that. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Are you ever too shy to compare your writing because you're afraid it's not that good? It can be really disheartening to get a lukewarm response to something you put so much into. But if you find other people who enjoy writing, then sharing becomes a lot easier. Because instead of just telling you that your writing is good or okay or bad, they'll want to focus more on everything that went into it and the things you can work on. It's so much more encouraging that way, and it will make you want to continue improving. It's almost like having your own little literature club, don't you think? That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. It's like a radio show. Who should I show my poem to next? I guess Natsuki. Oh man, this is seriously a step backwards. Uh huh. I liked your last two way better than this one. I mean, I guess I can't be mad at you for trying different things. As long as you're not just trying to impress Yuri or something like that. Gross. Okay, okay. Like you said, I'm allowed to try new things. Why are you so emotionally invested in my poems anyway? Isn't that more of a compliment to me? Uh, no, gross. It's not like I don't, it's not like I care. It's just that one of us in this club has to make sure you're not slacking off. Shouldn't that be Monica's job? Really? Well, what if you end up just scaring me away? That's, uh, it's not like you would really actually do that. Yeah, you're right. It's kind of fun to hang out here, even if you, ha even if I have to put up with you. Jeez. Oh, Nazuki elbow connects with my stomach. That's assault. <laughs> I guess it depends on how hard it is, to be fair. Like, we've all probably done shit like that with friends jokingly. Hopefully, like, not hard, though. Maybe I won't mind scaring you away after all. I was just joking. Oh, I know. Don't worry, I was too. <laughs> how the hell do you call that a joke? That seriously hurt. Oh. Well, maybe it was funny to her. I guess that's kind of the point. I should really just watch my mouth around Natsuki. Anyway, Natsuki holds out a poem to me like nothing even happened. I'll be your beach. Your mind is so full of troubles and fears that diminished your wonder over the years, but today I have a special place, a beach, for us to go. A shore reaching beyond your sight, a sea that sparkles with brilliant light, the walls in your mind will melt away before the sunny glow. I'll be the beach that washes your worries away. I'll be the beach that you daydream about each day. I'll be the beach that makes your heart leap in a way you thought had left you long ago. Let's bury your heavy thoughts in a pile of sand. Bathe in sunbeams and hold my hand. Wash your insecurities in the salty sea and let me see you shine. Leave your memories in a footprint trail. Set you free in my windy sail. And remember the reasons you're wonderful when you press your lips to mine. I think that's the first time she's written about something like that. I'll be the beach that washes your worries away. I'll be the beach that you daydream about each day. I'll be the beach that makes your heart leap in a way that you thought had left you long ago. But if you let me by your side, your own beach, your own escape, you'll learn to love yourself again. Yeah. I feel like I kept writing about negative things, so I wanted to write something with a nice message for once. Besides, the beach is awesome. Kind of hard to write anything negative about the beach. Well, Yuri's take on it is a, lo is a little more solemn. Well, that's... Jeez, she better not have said anything bad about mine. <laughs> After all, she was the one who wanted us to write about the same topic. But Yuri said it was your idea. Ugh, you can really see her doing that too. Making us write about a simple topic 
than trying to impress me by coming up with something all fancy. Well, it's not like I care. I just did it anyway. I mean, I guess mine ended up being kind of metaphorical too. But there's nothing wrong with doing that once in a while. At the very least, it was good practice. We haven't seen Sayori since she was, like, upset. Hmm? It's nice, I guess. Come on, I can already tell you don't like it. Well, you don't need to worry about that, I think. After all, you wrote this for someone else, didn't you? Probably Yuri. <laughs> I didn't write this for anyone specifically. Maybe. That's not really what I meant, though. But it's okay. You're making new friends, just like I was hoping. That makes me really happy. And you're happy too, right? In this club? Well, of course I am. Good. That's all that matters to me. Thank you, Doki Doki. Sayori, is there something wrong? Huh? No, nothing. I'm just a little tired today. <laughs> Alright. Just tell me if you need anything. I will. Don't worry about me, okay? You can go play with everyone else now. What about your poem? If you insist, yay! I'm gonna go home a little bit early today. Sayori, tell Monica I wasn't feeling well, okay? I'll see you tomorrow. Before I can say anything, Sayori cheerfully walks out of the classroom, humming to herself. Weird. Okay, you three. We're all done sharing poems, right? Why don't we start figuring out... Hold on a second. Is it just me, or did you say something strange just now? Eh? Something did sound a bit unusual. That's right. You deviated from your usual catchphrase when addressing the club. Catchphrase? I don't have a catchphrase. Jeez, why is the mood so weird today? Look, even Yuri isn't immune to it. Stagnating air is common foreshadowing when something terrible is about to happen. In your books, maybe. Look, the only thing different is that Sayori isn't here. Ah. It seems you're right. Sayori always helps lighten the mood a bit, doesn't she? It's almost like everyone's balance is thrown off a little when she's not around. Where the heck did she run off to anyway? I thought she just went to pee. Mitsuki, please show some decency. Oh, come on. Ah, she actually wasn't feeling too well and went home early. Is that so? I hope she's alright. Seriously? Of all the times to not go home with her, you pick the time she's not feeling well? So much for you two being all lovey-dovey. Ah, no. First of all, stop misunderstanding my friendship with Sayori. It is easy to do that, though, when you have this... When you use the same word friendship to describe your friendship with Sayori and your friendship with Yuri. You can understand their confusion. And second, she's kind of been avoiding me today, so I don't want to force it. Ooh. That curious expression came from Yuri, of all people. What? Did she not see any of that? Calm down, guys. I talked to her earlier and everything's fine. What did she say? <sighs> She's ignoring me. Anyways, we need to figure out the rest of the festival preparations. So, let's decide what everyone will be doing this weekend. I already know what I'm doing. That's right. Natsuki will be making cupcakes. Aww. But we might need a lot of them in different flavors. Can you handle that all by yourself, Natsuki? Challenge accepted. As for myself, I'm going to be printing and assembling all of the poetry pamphlets. Sayori will be helping me design them. And for you, and as for Yuri, Yuri, you can, um, guys, can you help me come up with something for Yuri? Wow! Way to help her feel included. I'm useless. No! This, no! That's not it at all. You're the most talented person here, you know. Well, Monica, that does not give the impression. You, you don't give the impression that Yuri is the most talented person when you're struggling to come up with something for her to do. Now Natsuki's pouting too. Jeez, even I can tell now. I guess I never gave Sayori enough credit, but I can tell things are even harder on you when she's not around. Ah, that may be the case. But if I can't also be a leader on my own, then I won't grow as a person. So, Yuri, you have beautiful handwriting, you know? So you should make some banners and decorations to help set the atmosphere. 
atmosphere um, about that. I I love atmosphere. Yuri's expression suddenly changes as she stares at her desk in focus and starts nodding to herself. Your mind is already racing, I see. That's great. You'll be a wonderful help, Yuri. But anyway, that just leaves you, Doki Doki. The one who is truly useless. I don't say that. In fact, both Natsuki and Yuri have some pretty heavy tasks to handle. It would probably go a long way to give one of them a hand. You could also help me out as well. I would be really appreciative of that. Ah, that's... Is Monica, is Monica suggesting I spend the weekend with one of my club members? How on earth are they going to respond to a suggestion like that? Ah, I suppose I wouldn't mind a bit of help. Well, even if you don't know how to bake, there's always some dirty work I could give you. It's not like Monica's giving me a choice, and you shouldn't be sitting on your butt anyway. Natsuki tries to mumble a bunch of excuses like that. Um, if I recall, Natsuki, you mentioned that you would like to handle the baking all on your own. Doki Doki may not like to be around if you only make him out to be a nuisance. So therefore, he may be more suited to assisting with the decorations. Hold on, I never said that. How hard could it be to make a few decorations anyway? The whole, like, <laughs> this theme of, like, the women arguing over the men. Man. Sounds more like you're just making excuses for Doki Doki to. What are you saying? It would be extremely meticulous work. And baking isn't? Just what do you think? <laughs> guys, guys. Let's settle down for a moment. In the end, I think it's up to Doki Doki to decide how I'd like to contribute. Besides, he hasn't really gotten a chance to spend any time with me yet, you know? It's true. So I hope he's interested in... You literally just said... I'm surprised as well. Sorry, sorry. Oh. Can I do none of it? Like, you're, you're all just gonna fight. I was just saying, though. Jeez. Can we just settle this already? Yeah. I, w I wonder what this game would be like if there was voice acting. Um, and if it would be, like, easier to kind of, like, really get a sense for the characters... Doki Doki, you're okay with this, right? In the end, it's up to you. Ah, of course. Hmm. Very well. In that case, everyone looks straight at me. But of course, I'm going to go with... This is a really hard choice because... Um, I'm not really considering Sayori or Natsuki. Um, the game has told me that there's a close relationship between, like, Sayori and I, but, like... I just haven't seen as much of that as I would like. So, I, like, mentally, I'm not really considering the two of them. And there's been, like, nothing with N Natsuki. So, like, I'm not considering her. The game has built up more of Yuri, but I'm really intrigued by Monica. Monica has some interesting poems um, and made some interesting comments, like, here or there. that make me very intrigued, and I wonder if more of that would come out um, if I spent time with her. But, um... Other than that, she's, like, boring. Like, she doesn't build up those relationship things. It's just, like, every once in a while, she lets some of those random comments through. And this is a blind playthrough, too, so I have no idea how important this choice is. How close to the end we are. Any of that stuff. So, why don't we go with Monica? Well, I guess I should probably be helping Monica forgot what she said she was even going to be doing. Yay, you picked me! Hold on for a second. Yeah! Monica, you're the one who needs the least help out of all of us. Yeah, but... This music. I agree with Natsuki. Not only is your work already most suitable for one person, but you already have Sayori as well. But Doki Doki was the one who... Uh, that doesn't matter. You were the one who scared him into picking you in the first place! You're the club president, Monica. You're supposed to make respons or yeah, responsible decisions for the club. Monica, you shouldn't let any ulterior motives interfere with this decision. Ulterior motives? What are you saying, Yuri? In fact, it sounds like you guys are the ones with ulterior motives. Excuse me? Otherwise, this wouldn't have been made into such a big deal in the first place. That's completely false, Monica. Yeah. We have a lot of work to do, you know. We won't do as good of a job if you make us work alone. Uh-huh, maybe that's true. 
Think of the club, Monica. If we want our event to succeed, then we need to appropriately distribute our resources. Um, uh -huh. So are you going to do the right thing, President? Ah, uh, okay. Okay, I get it. It's technically most logical for Doki Doki to help one of you two. So, I guess that's what we'll do. <laughs> Are they going to be upset that I didn't immediately choose them? <laughs> um, if her job is most suited for one person, why would she even give me that as a choice? So yeah, out of these three, I'm for sure going to choose Yuri. Like, it's not even a question. Well, I'll probably be the most useful helping out Yuri. Me? Well, yeah, because I couldn't go with Monica. Are you serious? Yeah, yes. Keep up, Natsuki. Why would you? Natsuki, I can already tell you're about to say something mean. No, I was just saying. Uh, so you'll be helping Yuri then, Doki Doki? Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm glad. I have a bad habit of overthinking these sorts of things. So I think your assistance will be very useful. That's great to hear. Natsuki, will you be able to handle the baking by yourself? I mean, yeah, I already said I would be fine. Okay, okay. Everyone can tell that Natsuki is feeling a little sour. So is that everything we need to, we needed to go over? Yeah, that should be about it. Are you guys excited? Well, excited may not be the right word. But I suppose I'm looking forward to it a little bit. Do you feel the same way, Doki Doki? Me? Uh, I guess you could say I'm interested to see how it'll turn out. That's good enough for me. What about you, Natsuki? Natsuki? What? Why is everyone yelling at me? I didn't even do anything. N no, that's not what I meant at all. Uh, Yuri anxiously glances between everyone in the room. <laughs> I'm sorry for this. I don't really know why Doki Doki picked me. And also... Your cupcakes are the best cupcakes I've ever had. They really go well with my tea. And nothing that I do for the event will compare to that. So, so, I get it. I get it. I'm kind of surprised, though. Why? Well, I'm the one acting immature. I already know that. But you're trying to cheer me up all of a sudden. I know. I'm not very good at it. I'm sorry if I said anything bad. Natsuki isn't the only one surprised. Monica and I are also taken back by Yuri's words. When she already has trouble with words, trying to cheer someone up must be far out of her comfort zone. But I begin to understand. Yuri is trying to sound like Sayori. S -s -s Yuri was trying to sound like Sayori. Even if it didn't work perfectly, I can tell that she tried to say something Sayori would say at a time like this. Because Sayori always helps everyone smile and feel good about themselves. No, I kind of appreciate it. I'm sorry for making a big deal out of nothing. But I'm going to say this. You better bet that my cupcakes are going to be the best part of this whole event. I mean, they got us to join the club, didn't they? I believe you. Yeah. I hope to see everyone do their best. But with that, there's nothing more for today. So I guess it's time for us to head out. All right, let's get out of here then. Everyone packs up their things, and I start to follow Monica and Natsuki out the door as they chat between each other. Um, uh, turn around. Sorry. I realize that I don't have any way of contacting you this weekend. Oh, you're right. I can't believe that slipped my mind. Should I give you my phone number? I think that would be the best way, yes. All right, then. Yuri and I exchange phone numbers. Okay, then I'll be stopping by your house on Sunday. Eh? My house? Is that a problem? No, not at all. I just thought it would, I would be the one going to your house since I'm the one helping you. Oh, I suppose that makes sense. But if you don't mind, I think I'd prefer going to your house. Why? All right. In that case, I it won't be a problem. I decide not to press Yuri for a reason. It's not like it should matter much either way, so I'll just need to make sure my room's clean. I hope I manage to make myself useful in some way. I'm not nearly as creative as you are. Don't underestimate yourself, Doki Doki. I think that we'll make a very productive team. Even if you only choose me because you felt bad or something. Everybody gets so down on themselves. Yuri, like the main character. Like they look for more reasons why they're doing horrible than reasons why they're doing well. You don't actually think that, do you? 
I don't know. It's difficult to come up with any other reason you may have chosen me. After they sat together holding the same book and he fed her chocolate while she had her arm on his leg? You're forgetting the one reason with the most common sense. I chose to help you because that's what I want to do. But Yuri thinks to herself with an extremely tense expression. Yuri, you're overthinking this. You wanted me to point out when you're overthinking, right? <sighs> I didn't realize. I'm telling you, I want to. That's all there is to it. Do you believe me? I... Yuri thinks really hard again. She looks straight into my eyes for a long while. I believe you. As if it took her tremendous effort, Yuri finally says that and relaxes her expression. And I'm really looking forward to Sunday. Yeah, I am too. After that exchange, I make my way out the door and Yuri follows. I can't believe this. Yuri is going to be coming to my house on Sunday. My anxiety shoots through the roof. Even though I've gotten pretty used to handling her at this point. Handling her? There's no telling what might end up happening when we're outside of the school. More than that, she told me she was looking forward to it. Is this the chance I have to make something happen between us? Or is it too early for that? Only time will tell. But until then, I won't be able to take my mind off of it. I seriously can't wait. It's already Sunday. Sunday happened real fast. I've been getting increasingly anxious about Yuri's upcoming visit. I keep telling myself there's no reason to be nervous, but it doesn't help much. Yuri's, Yuri is clearly an introvert and also an intimate person in general. There's no doubt that she'll open up a bit when it's just the two of us. Meanwhile, we've been texting occasionally. She was extremely apprehensive at first, but it wasn't long before I was already learning more about her. But putting Yuri aside, I haven't heard a thing from Sayori since she left the club early the other day. It's not like we text each other all the time or anything. He didn't like reach out and be like, hey, how are you? But I've been worried about her in the back of my mind. Between what Sayori said and what Monica said, is it really okay for me to put Sayori's feelings aside when she might need me? Did you try asking? <sighs> Thank you. I decide to visit Sayori before Yuri comes over. Rather than asking, I simply tell her I'm coming over, much like we've done in the past. Once I reach Sayori's house, I knock on the door before entering it myself. Again, we used to play so often that we made it a habit of simply entering each other's houses like we were family. The house is quiet. Sayori isn't anywhere on the first floor, so I assume she's up in her room. It's already strange of her not to run down and greet me. I head up to her bedroom where I finally find her. Sayori? Hi, Doki Doki. I sit down in her room. Sayori forces a smile, but it's easy to tell that she's different. There's a minute of silence between us. You haven't come over like this in a long time, have you? Ah, I guess you're right. It has been a long time. Not much has really changed, has it? Sayori's room is as messy as it's always been. I also recognize the same stuffed animals and wall decorations that she's had for years now. Not really many wall decorations besides, like, a calendar. <laughs> <laughs> if you came over more often, it wouldn't be such a mess. You mean, if we came over to clean? That's because I end up cleaning it for you. How come you suddenly wanted to come over today? Aren't you supposed to see Yuri today? Yeah, but... Wait, how did you know that? Sayori so had already left by the time we decided that last meeting. She talks to Monica, like... Monica told me. It's only natural for her to keep me informed about the festival preparations, right? Ah, that's true. But what about you? Aren't you going to be helping Monica today? Of course. But I'm just helping her online. Oh. We didn't plan to meet up or anything. Ah, so it's just me and Yuri then. Yep. There's more silence between us. Sayori stares in a random direction. Everything about her behavior is really uncharacteristic. I finally get to the point. I just wanted to see how you were doing after you left on Friday. When something's wrong, you can't hide it from me. I know you too well. Well, she didn't really try to hide it. So, Sayori smiles, shaking her head. That's no good, Doki Doki. Hmm? Why can't it just be like it's always been? This is all my fault. If I didn't get so weak and accidentally expose my feelings. It is not weak to talk about and like express feelings. It's actually really strong because there's a lot of vulnerability that comes with that. 
Because we... <laughs> it's kind of like risking getting hurt when we put ourselves out there like that. And that takes a lot of bravery. If I didn't make that stupid mistake, then you wouldn't have been worried about me at all. You wouldn't have come here. You wouldn't have even been thinking about me right now. But this is just my punishment, isn't it? I'm getting punished for being so selfish. Wow, that's a lot of like heavy stuff. I think that's why the world decided to have you come over today. It just wants to torture me. <laughs> Siori. I grab Siori by the shoulders. What on earth are you saying? Are you listening to yourself right now? I know something happened to you. There's no other explanation for you being like this. This is... So, okay. So, Siori is saying, like, if only I hadn't been so weak and exposed to the fact that I like you, and then, like, our character is... is, like, oblivious and doesn't know that. Is that what this is? Like, that kind of, like, trope of, like, I don't know this woman like me? So tell me already. Until I know, I won't be able to stop thinking about it. Ah, ahaha. Ah, Sayori gives me an empty smile. I just realized too, it also doesn't make sense that like our character doesn't know that she likes them because like Monica basically told us. You really put me in a trap, Doki Doki. But you're wrong. Nothing happened to me. I've always been like this. You're just seeing it for the first time. Seeing what? What are you talking about, Sayori? <laughs> you're really just going to make me say it, aren't you, Doki Doki? I guess I have no choice this time. The thing is, I have... I've had really bad depression my whole life. Not what I was expecting. I was expecting her to say, I like you. Not that she's been struggling with depression. Oh, that's why she struggles to get out of bed. That's why, like, so the depression impacts her sleeping habits. The depression impacts her ability to clean up um, and her cooking. Oh. Fuck. I didn't see it sooner. Did you know that? No. Why do you think I'm late to school every day? Because most days, I can't even find a reason to get out of bed. What reason is there to do anything when I fully know how worthless I am? Why go to school? Why eat? Why make friends? Why make other people put their energy and caring to waste by spending it on me? So like a lot of this idea of like, I feel so worthless. That's what it feels like. And that's why I just want to make everyone happy. And that's often a really common thing, this idea of, like, I feel so horrible and I don't want anyone else to feel this way, so I'm going to use comedy to, like, make other people feel happy so that way they don't even feel anywhere close to how I'm feeling. Without anyone worrying about me. I'm in shock. I can't even figure out how to respond. How is it possible that Sayori kept this from me the entire time that I've known her? I mean, we think of depression, though, as, like, obvious like 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 people will rock will like people will walk around with a shirt that says i have depression and that's not how it is um and i think a lot of that is uh like the commercials that we see from like the pharmaceutical companies that make it look very physical but it's not um depression can be really hard to figure out sometimes and it can be really subtle things that that pop up very slowly um and so it's not something that we see all the time it's not obvious did she really want so badly for me just to not think about her okay, i i don't think that it's that siori doesn't want you to think about her i think it's more that she sees herself as being so negative and like so worthless that um, because of her own self-image and like how she sees herself in that way it's kind of like well if I'm so horrible I don't want to burden people and so I think it's it's more of that versus like actually thinking I don't I don't want other people to think about me it's more like I don't I don't want other people to be burdened by the thought of me why Siori why hide it why is it that you've never told me about this? 
There's a lot of vulnerability that comes with that, though. Um, I cannot speak of um, the amount of stigma that, like, mental health has in other countries, but um, it often, in general, I guess, has a lot of stigma and it is seen as such a negative thing. And that means that it can be so hard to go to a friend, to go to a family member even and say, like, I think I'm struggling with depression. So, like, this character's almost like, oh my gosh, like, I thought we had such a close relationship that you could do that. When it comes to mental health stuff, the stigma makes it so much harder, so it really doesn't matter. And oftentimes, the mental health stuff in general also makes it harder. The mental health um, kind of lies to us and says that we are this burden on other people around us, which also makes it so much harder to open up to people in our lives and say, hey, I'm struggling with this thing. It almost feels like I've been betrayed as your close friend. That isn't the case. And this also, like, I think that we can feel hurt that people don't feel safe and, um, like, safe or close enough to say these kinds of things or to share these kinds of things about themselves. That is that is valid. But at the same time, when someone finally does share this thing about themselves, um, I think that it's more about what is being shared and less about us. Because I think that if someone finally does open up and say, hey, I've been struggling with depression, if our response is something like, oh my gosh, like I feel so hurt that you haven't shared this before, really we're, we're going to end up making it more about us. And I think that that can make it harder for people in the future to share with us. Um, I think that those feelings are valid, but I think that sometimes it's about kind of um, how we talk about them and maybe even the timing. Because if that is said right after that kind of very difficult and very vulnerable moment, I think it makes people kind of often clam up because why would we want to open up again in the future if all we hear is like, I feel like I've been betrayed because you didn't say this sooner. Because if I knew, I would have done something so I could support you. Even if there's only so much I could do. I would have tried a little harder to make every day a little better for you. It's really hard because there is only so much we can do. That's why I'm your friend. All you had to do was tell me. You don't understand at all, Doki Doki. Why do you think I didn't tell you? Because if I told you, then you would have waste, had to waste effort caring about me instead of doing important things. So basically, Sayori is saying a lot of what I was saying earlier, this idea that like I'm a burden, I don't want to burden you. I don't want to take you away from doing important things, things that are better than me. I don't want to be cared about. It's bittersweet when people try to care about me. That's why she related so much to that word. It feels nice sometimes, but it also feels like a bat being swung against my head. Ah. That's why I wanted so badly for you to make friends with everyone else. Helping everyone be happy together is the best thing for me. But then I discovered something else too. Seeing you make friends and get closer with everyone else in the club, it feels like a spear going through my heart. So that's why. That's why I decided the world just wants to torture me. Every path leads to nothing but hurt. You're right, that I don't understand. I don't understand your feelings at all, Siori. But I don't need to understand. That's true. Whatever it takes for me to help you stop hurting. I mean, we can't do whatever it takes, but I think that we can offer support even if we don't understand that what we're doing is supportive. And, and by that, I mean, sometimes I think it's fair to ask people, like, how can I support you? And then we do that thing, if we if we can, if it's reasonable, all of that good stuff, even if we don't see it as supportive. Because sometimes people might tell us, like, I just need you to listen. That may not feel like support to us, but if it's support to them, does that matter? No. What matters is that we're, we're doing the thing. That's what I'll do. 
No, Doki Doki. There's nothing. Nothing at all. Nothing at nothing at all. The only thing that could have helped is if everything could be like it always was. But I was selfish. I finally showed you what a horrible person I am. Tears streaked down Sayori's face. I made you join the literature club because I was selfish. And I was punished by my heart hurting in a way that I couldn't understand. And now you come here and I made you hurt too. I'm just weak and selfish. That's all I am. Such heavy words throughout this conversation. And that's why I'm going to accept these punishments. The heart hurt? Because I deserve every last one. Without thinking, I once again grab Sayori's shoulders. This time, I pull her into a tight embrace. Ah, doki doki. Sayori, I don't care if you feel selfish. I'm really happy that you convinced me to join the club. Seeing you every day makes it worthwhile enough. If I make friends with everyone else, then that's just a bonus. But please never underestimate how much I care about you. I wouldn't have had it any other way. Doki Doki, Sayori isn't hugging me back. Despite my arms being wrapped around her, Sayori's arms remain at her sides. She starts sobbing right into my ear. No, don't do this to me. Please don't do this. Doki Doki, I... Sayori barely manages to speak between her sobs. I don't know if I'm doing the right thing. But all I want is for her to know that I care. If you have it in you to call yourself selfish, then you have to let me be selfish too. No matter what it takes, I'll figure out what needs to change. I'll make these feelings go away. And if there's anything that you need me to do, then you'd better tell me. I'll get mad if you don't. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Gently, Siori finally puts her arms around me in return. I don't know anything. It's all really scary. I don't understand any of my feelings, Doki Doki. The only time I'm not feeling nothing is when I'm feeling pain. But your hugs are so warm, and that's really scary too. Siori lets me go. As she does, I let her go as well. The festival is tomorrow. Yeah, it's going to be fun, right? Yeah. How would you like for me to spend it all with you? Um... Uh, it's what I want. I promise. I... I think that would be nice then. Yeah. Siori wipes her eyes. If I could spend the whole day here, I would. Of all days, this has to be the one where I have other plans. Maybe I should cancel. No, don't. Please don't. If you did that, then I really wouldn't forgive you. But it's almost time for Yuri to meet me at my house. At the very least, do you want to come along and help out? It would be fun. To my surprise, Siori shakes her head. I'm sorry, I don't know if that would be very good for me today. You understand, right? Ah, uh, it's kind of hard for me to fully understand, but I'm trying my hardest. It's okay. Don't worry too much about it. I'll see you tomorrow then. All right. I'll look forward to it. I wonder how much that interaction like changes if people replay the game and how many people then choose to be closer with Sayori. Because that does change so many of these interactions that we have had with her. Um, you know, we, we kind of like made fun of her for all of these things that really mental health. I say goodbye to Sayori and exit her house. On the way home, I find myself still feeling uneasy, but it's hard for me to keep thinking about it when Yuri is about to come over too. I think Sayori is right. I shouldn't be worrying too much and we're definitely going to have a great time tomorrow. I should just focus on what's ahead of me. As I approach my house, I see something that makes me feel a moment of panic. Yuri? Ah, thank goodness. You're a little early. I'm sorry, I wasn't home yet. Were you waiting for a long time? No, I just got here, but I started to get really nervous when nobody answered the doorbell. Where's your family? You could always have texted me. If I had known, I would have reassured you and hurried more on my way home. I suppose it's true. I didn't think of that for some reason. It should be common sense to do that, but I decided to ignore it. Yeah, but like, we've also learned that Yuri doesn't really have a lot of friends. Like, her friends are books, so like these things that we may think of as common sense 
our, our common sense because of like in part because of the social skills that we have and maybe yuri hasn't had as much time to build that up anyway let's go inside i see you brought a bunch of stuff with you that's right and did you manage to find everything i asked you to buy as well yeah pretty much at least i hope i got everything right i'm sure it'll be fine I take Yuri to my room. The first thing she does is glance around curiously, which makes me feel anxious. It's so clean! <laughs> I cleaned it before you came over, so that's very considerate of you to do. Ah, no. It would be really embarrassed if my room were to be a mess while you were here. Hmm. Well, I do enjoy cleaning. I would have gladly helped you clean. Ah. That would be even more embarrassing. Isn't it, like, more polite to not have a guest clean? Wait, don't look in there. I snatch Yuri's wrist, which is in the process of opening a desk drawer of mine. Ah, I'm sorry. I wasn't thinking for some reason. Kind of just like, oh, what's in here? Probably not the most polite thing to do. I just, I was just spacing out. It's fine, it's fine. I let go of Yuri's wrist. She puts both her hands firmly in her lap as if making sure she's keeping track of them. So, um, should we get started? Ah, yes. Um, I have a few things planned that you can help with. Decorations and other atmospheric enhancements. Atmospheric enhancements? You know, mood lighting, aromatherapy candles, fog machine? Oh wow, I didn't know you planned on taking it that far. Of course, I wanna help take our guests to a faraway place. Although many will just stop by out of curiosity. And four cupcakes, I guess. I determined, to, I'm determined to provide an experience that will leave them wanting more. That's great. It's easy to forget that you're a pretty intense person. Ah, intense. I guess that's the best way to put it. Is that a bad thing? No, not at all. It's just something that I like about you, actually. Is that so? That makes me feel relieved. I'm kind of happy. Yeah, no need to be so anxious. You can relax a little. Relax. I brought some things for relaxation. I was going to use them during the poetry event. Oh yeah, like what? Let's see. Yuri rummages through her bag. She pulls out a few candles and a wooden cylinder-shaped object. I did some shopping on the way here, so I happen to have these in my bag. I plan to cover the windows in black paper and use the candles to light the room. I think that would be amazing, don't you? Yeah, that would be really neat. What's that wooden thing, though? Oh, this? It's a diffuser for essential oils. How familiar are you with aromatherapy? Not familiar at all. Ah, is that so? It's one of my favorite contributors to a positive atmosphere. Depending on the oils or herbs you choose, you can change the mood of the air itself. You can even feel it permeate through your body. Relaxation, positive energy, romance, reflection. It's almost like magic. Yuri takes the cylinder and pushes a switch on the bottom. In just a moment, a thin ray of vapor, uh, a thin ray of vapor begins to spout through a small hole at the top. Oh wow, that smells wonderful. What kind of mood is that one for? This is jasmine essential oil. It smells a little sweet and flowery, right? Yeah, that's a good way to describe it. I chose jasmine for the event because it provides more than relaxation. Jasmine enhances your emotions and helps you feel them flow through your body. You feel warmer and your heart pounds more heavily. Don't you think it will be perfect for sharing our poems? It does sound suitable. But you seem to know a lot about this, so I'll trust your opinion with everything. Yuri smiles gently, clearly enjoying herself. She again reaches into her bag and pulls out several spools of thin ribbon. What are those for? Well, did you purchase the origami paper I asked you to get? Yeah, I have it here. We won't be using the paper for folding origami. What I'd like to do is write a different word on each paper. We'll need about a hundred of them. Oh yeah? What will we be using them for? Well, I'm going to cut pieces of ribbon to hang from the doorway of the classroom. Then we can fasten the paper onto the ribbons to create a doorway curtain. Wouldn't that be beautiful? It would also catch the eye of those passing by the room. It may attract some to peek inside. That'll be, that's really creative. I had no idea you'd be so good at this, Yuri. Is that so? Well, I suppose I do get a little intense, as you put it. <laughs> Yuri giggles with red cheeks. Is it just me, or is she more relaxed when it's just the two of us? Or maybe it's the excitement she feels from sharing something that she enjoys. Also, this is a whole new setting. Like, you you guys have never, like, met outside of school. Um, 
<laughs> like, there's a lot of different elements to this as well. Here's a marker, Doki Doki. You can write any characters you want. I'll help you once I finish cutting the ribbons. Ah, all right. Sitting on the floor together, the two of us get to work. I carefully draw a different character on each paper, doing my best to manage my bad handwriting. Yuri unravels a long strand of red ribbon to her desired length. Then she reaches into her bag once more and pulls out a pocket knife. Nah? The knife is strangely beautiful. The silver handle has an intricate pattern of waves etched into it. The blade itself is gently tinted blue. That's no ordinary pocket knife. It looks really fancy. Ah, well, embarrassed Yuri looks away. What is it? You're gonna think it's weird. Yuri, whatever it is, I have no reason to judge. Yeah, we just like heard that our childhood best friend has depression and we never knew. To each their own, you know? If you promise you won't be weirded out. Yeah, I promise. All right, the thing is, I'm kind of into knives. Like in what, in what way? They're just so pretty. I can't help it. I don't know what it is. The combination of craftsmans craftsmanship and feeling of danger, maybe. Um, what was I saying? Please don't think I'm weird for this. <laughs> You're laughing at me. No, I'm I'm not laughing at you. I'm just just funny how nervous you got about sharing. Kind of still laughing at her as well. It's an interesting thing to be into, I guess. But I think it kind of suits you. Suits me? Yeah. It's kind of intense. Besides, it's a really cool looking knife. I can't deny that. It is, isn't it? Yuri relaxes her expression once again. Would you like to hold it? You say that like it's your child. Sure, I'll check it out. Yuri carefully hands me the knife with the handle facing me. I take it and turn it around in my hands. It feels heavy and extremely solid. Where do you even get a knife like this? Curious of the sharpness, I feel the point of the knife with my index finger. Ow! Well, I mean, like, you knew that was gonna happen. Doki Doki, why did you do that? I didn't expect it to be that sharp. I barely touched it at all. It's my fault. I should have warned you. This knife is extremely sharp. It can cut through skin like it's paper. Why not use an actual, like, thing of scissors then? Like, you're doing a school project. Use scissors. Oh no, a small drop of blood trickles down the side of my finger. Yuri takes my hand and gives the wound a closer look. Are we gonna... Are... Ah, she stares at it and noticeably fidgets. If you're squeamish, I'll go wash it off now. Ah, uh, without warning, I knew it. I skipped past that slide, but it was that she put our finger in her mouth. I feel her tongue curl around my finger. I knew it. I knew it. Startled, I instinctively pull my hand back. Oh, please forgive me. I wasn't thinking. I... She lowers her head, her face burning up. Yuri, that's the most embarrassing thing I've ever done. How could I do something like that? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Ah. Uh, sure, it was a little weird and it took me by surprise. But I guess she was trying to help, right? Yuri, I think you're overreacting a little. She doesn't lift her head. What if she doesn't recover from this for the rest of the afternoon? All right, you know what? This might be a stupid thing to do, but I do it anyway. <sighs> I take Yuri's hand and lick her index finger in return. Doki Doki, did you really just do that? Now we're even? Yuri just looks at me like I did something wrong. Uh, I knew that would be a bad idea. If not for the sweet aroma of jasmine oil, the air would be extremely heavy right now. You're so weird, Doki Doki. Yuri giggles shyly. <sighs> Yuri calling me weird? I have no response to that. Where do you keep your bandages? Ah, uh, I don't think I need one, actually. It was just a tiny cut. Look at it already stopped bleeding. I see. That's relieving. The tension is quickly lifted. We each resume our respective activities. I watch Yuri's knife cut through the ribbon like it's nothing but air. Meanwhile, I continue making progress on the paper. This is a good place to stop. In this video, we have learned a lot more about these characters. And actually, the whole thing with Sayuri kind of 
I guess it just like blew my mind because this game on the surface seems like it's a dating sim and like a very superficial dating sim, right? We get these very, these moments that seem like tropes, right? Even the thing with um, putting the, f the finger in their mouth, right? It just seems like it leans so far into those tropes, but then we get this thing of like, oh, by the way, I'm depressed. And like, that's been set up from the beginning of the game. And that makes me wonder like, what else is going on with these other characters? There have been random things here and there that were kind of strange, but I just kind of brushed it off because like, eh, probably doesn't mean anything. But now I'm sitting there going, but did it mean something? So I am really curious to find out. We're going to have to find out in the next video. So I will see you guys in the next video.